my collecting box is about a third the size of Jack's. Mm -hmm. But then everything that I take to the collecting site doesn't fit in the box either. But I do have a uh, box of ceramics in there. <laughs> and the only place I've ever used it is at uh, Mount Oro. But I do have it in there. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit now about what you do after you made all these great discoveries and collected all these fantastic fossils, and now you're going to take them home. Um, I have a lot of styrofoam trays. If you go to Kroger's or someplace and buy chicken, it comes in a yellow tray. Most of them are a white tray. I save those. When I wash the dishes or my wife washes the dishes, she finds one of those trays in there, that gets washed too. And I've got a stack of them. So when I get home, I collect with uh, a bag also, not like Jack's. Uh, my bags are like this or bigger. They may be Ziploc or they will be like this. And also then, when I put something in, I always do this. I close it so it's sealed so that if it does fall over, things are not going to fall out of it, okay? But when I get home, I don't keep my fossils in here because they can tumble a lot. Uh, it's bad enough when you're on the site. If I find something that's really delicate, I'll have a little container. Uh, I, I carry a little army pouch with little vial, uh, plastic vials in it, and I'll put something in there or uh, use uh, film containers and I'll put those things separated in there so they don't get beat up in the bag. Um, I'll take everything out of the bag and before I leave the site and sometimes halfway through depending on how I collect and how many different levels I collect, I have with me usually little cards. Uh, little, uh, they were for a, kind of dances or something a long time ago. I just turn them over and on the back I write the site, the date, and any other pertinent information, and then when I'm collecting, I stick it in the bag so that I know where these things came from. When I get home then, I take all that out and I put it in one of those trays, and I take the card out and I stick it in there. And I usually arrange them, I've got a little shelf thing, I arrange them in order that I collect them. And then when I have time to clean, okay, I grab the, the, the uh, tray, it's got all the fossils in from that site. Once in a while I need two of those trays, although I've got a couple of pretty big ones. And uh, I know where they came from, and I take them out, and I get something. I'm gonna get all this stuff out of here first. <laughs> okay. Um, anybody know what this is? Yeah, go to the hospital. That's a hospital trip. Okay, I give them away. All you gotta do is be really sick. Okay? Or know somebody who is. Most people, when they get out of the hospital, they throw this stuff away. I ask them for it. Okay? Actually, I've got two of them now that are really nice, a lot better than this one. But this was a recent acquisition, unfortunately. Uh, not for me, for somebody else. These make good trays for cleaning fossils. Okay, now you can use a, you know, get a, a, a dish pan or something like a plastic dish pan or something. And these are a pretty good size. And what I do is I put, take the fossils and I put them in the tray and then I cover them with water. And I leave them set. Okay, because now any mud that's on there it's going to soften up. Now, obviously, I'm going to look at these things before I put them in there. And if I see something that I think is going to come apart in the water, it doesn't go in there. I clean that separately. But if it, uh, ordinary uh, things that I find, bracks and, and uh, clams and things like this, they go in here, they get covered with water, and they sit in there for a while. Then, when I clean them, this is what I use. A toothbrush and water. Okay, I have access to bottles like this. I teach chemistry. And I accumulate some of these from other people. They give them to me. Um, but 
What you do, you can get a good stream of water, which you can direct on the fossil. Use the toothbrush to gently remove any kind of mud. And it's important that you do it gently. Don't get out, you're not trying to scrub the thing clean. A uh, long time ago, uh, I was collecting in a creek bed, and there was like a little waterfall and a big shale layer. And I found laying on, the, on a ledge of shale, this rock, and it had a couple of little brachiopods on it. Uh, probably, if I was collecting today, I wouldn't even have picked it up. All right, because they're just common brachiopods. But I picked this up, I put it in a bag, I looked at it. It had a big glump of mud on the bottom of it, shale, mud. I stuck it in the bag, I took it home. Put it in the water, I start to clean it, and I gotta get that mud off. So I turn it over, and I start cleaning the mud, and I looked, and I thought, what is that, a bryozoan that's laying on that, on there? And I started cleaning a little more. I had the two common brachiopods on the other side, and on this side, I had part of the stem, the crown, and arms of the antenna It was the first crinoid I had actually ever found, and it was in that mud. Now, if I had really scrubbed on that, I might have destroyed that thing, because it was literally lying on top of the rock. So you have to be, you have to be somewhat careful. You don't want to uh, attack them too much. Uh, so a stream of water, or in some cases, my wife says I make a lot of noise when I sleep. I've never heard of you. Okay? I've never heard of you. <coughs> So we buy this stuff. Well, I get these bottles in, and they're spray bottles. They're great. All you got to do is put some water in them, and it's pump spray, and it sprays nice mist of water. These things are great when you're out in the field, too, because you don't get things too wet. What Jack was saying, you don't want to clean things in the field. You really don't, because you tend to lose things, and it's hard to find them. When they fall on the ground, you got 12,000 fossils laying at your feet, and now what you want to say, fell amongst them, it's hard to find. But you can get a nice little mist of water on them, and sometimes things show up better when they're wet than when they're dry. But when they're dry, they look a lot of like, like the rocks that they're in. When you wet them, they're a different color. And so this is another way to produce a little stream of water. Okay? And then gently clean with this. So when I get everything loose, I spray off the water, and now I've got other <coughs> trays. Okay? If you ever have bought, you know, 15 or 16, you know, pre-cut pork chops or something, or three pounds of chicken, and they're on a tray about this big, a styrofoam tray, I keep those two. And now, as I clean the fossils, I lay them out on that styrofoam tray. Put all, you know, brachiopods here, and certain kinds of brachiopods, and gastropods, gastropods over here, bryozoans, and that's where I lay them out to dry. Occasionally, I'll use something to dry them, a towel or something like that. One of the things you, you have to be careful how much lint the towel gives off because you get it all over your fossils, and then you've got to clean it and get the collection off again. As you're cleaning the fossils, these are nice. These are dental picks. Okay? I've got more of them at home. I don't use them that much. Dental picks are fine if you have a fossil that's partially buried in the matrix and you know the shape of the fossil. They're not good if you just start digging in the rock because you can destroy the fossil. Another thing, a lot of times uh, people get brachiopods and they want to scrape off all the things that are attached. Well, as Jack alluded to, sometimes those things can be pretty important. You know, hydroasteroids have a tendency to be on brachiopods, or sometimes they're on bryozoans uh, too, okay? Uh, you find things like uh, corcolitids on bracts. You can find uh, various types of bryozoans attached to the bracts. There's all types of things, epibionts that are attached to other fossils. And so you don't necessarily want to clean them off because they might be more important than the brachiopod. Uh, 
I was at the museum today, and I, there's this box, and there's one little tiny brachiopod laying in there. 